Welcome back to the channel and today we have a really exciting tutorial. We're going to be doing a switch loop earbuds tutorial where we're going to be doing the modeling in this part, which is part one. And then in the second part, we'll do a bit of animation, compositing, rendering, things like that. But I think this is going to be a fun one. It's relatively simple. Um, we're going to be taking something that looks like it might be complicated, but really um, it's the simplest of modeling here. Really, we're going to keep it very simple. It's pretty much just a donut with some extra details on it. Um, so yeah. Link in the description if you want to check out my Patreon where the file is, um, if you want to support me there, or you can just like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. And I really hope you guys enjoy what I'm about to show you. And don't forget, this is part one, like I said, you don't want to miss part two, which I'll be uploading afterwards. Okay, so first of all, we're going to need some reference images. So go to the internet and just type in loop switch earplugs and um, just, you know, go to like some sort of product page. Um, and it doesn't really matter what color they are as long as it's the same model because you can always change the color in a blender But once you find some shots like this on a product advertisement um, Just use something like a screenshot tool. That's what I like to use. This is free one called light shot It's super easy to download. It's free and you could just um, take some screenshots And it's just like any other snip tool that you get and what you can do is you can take uh, some different angles of it um, so that's what I did. I just kind of looked at a video and then I just kind of took some screenshots of as many angles as I could. So maybe from the front, from the back. But you guys kind of get the idea, right? So at least make sure you have some references handy. And if you can't find this, just take some screenshots of my references that you're about to see. So what I did is I just put those into a folder somewhere like this on my computer. As you can see, I have some different angles here and that's just gonna help things out a lot. So let's jump into Blender 4.0 and let's just select everything and press delete. Then we're gonna go Shift A in our front orthographic. Let's add in a circle. And let's tab into edit mode and with this circle active, we're gonna go R, X, 9, 0. I'm gonna press enter. And I'm gonna tab back out. And at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a rough reference. It doesn't really matter, okay? You can even eye this if you want to. But I'm just gonna drag in one of those images, those screenshots, like so, just dragging it in. I'm gonna scale it down roughly like so. It really doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm gonna grab the circle and with everything active in edit mode with the vertex select option, I'm gonna go E to extrude and Z and just roughly extrude it to that size like so. Tab back out and then grab this guy and just kind of move it back for now. So what we need to do is we need to tab into edit mode and in our right orthographic view, um, Let's just with this inside loop still selected in our right orthographic view, we're going to go E to extrude and Y and extrude it back about this much. And then we're going to come over here, just go to our edge select and shift alt left click on this edge here and go control B. And just kind of bevel it about this much and then roll your middle mouse button just once to add in an extra segment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually grab this edge here and go E to extrude and Y and extrude it back for now about this much. And let's go shift alt left click on this edge and go control B and just kind of bevel it and rolling in an edge loop with your mouse button. So we're gonna roll in two. So roll it twice. We have two segments like this and then just click. And now we have this sort of rough shape starting over here. So now let's go back into the right orthographic view and let's have a look at some of those references. Once again, you can just kind of look along with me as I'm doing this. I might just get a side reference like this and just drag it in here. Oh, you have to go into object mode whenever you drag in a reference. And I'll just kind of roughly scale it down to match this. We're only being very rough here. And then I'm gonna go S, Y, negative zero in this case, just to kind of invert it so it's facing the right way. Cause that bit is gonna be that bit over there. Remember, this is just a rough guide. We really don't wanna be, we're not going too crazy here. We're just having some fun. Okay, so something like that. Then I'm just gonna grab this, go back into edit mode. And then I'm just gonna grab this and also just move it further along the X so it's not stuck in here. So in the right orthographic view, let's grab this edge here. Let's go E to extrude and Y. Let's enable proportional editing. Let's just go S and just kind of scale this all down and in just a little bit, just to kind of match the angle that we're seeing here. And then I'm gonna go E to extrude S to scale. Go in like so. Then select this edge here and go control B and just make a tiny bevel like so. And then let's select one of these edges here, as you can see. And in our right orthographic view, we can go shift D to duplicate and Y and move it up just a little bit. And now we're gonna go E to extrude and Y and extrude that out. And let's bring it to 
about here. As to scale, down like so. And let's have a look at that reference. Um, so it's a little bit thinner than that. So I'm just gonna double G, just slide it back just a bit, maybe that much. Okay, that's looking good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go E to extrude as to scale. Let's go about this much for now. And we also wanna just grab this edge in here and go E to extrude as to scale. And then let's go shift alt left click on this edge over here and let's just go control B and give it a slight bevel as well, like that. And now we can also, I guess, grab this edge over here. Let's go control B just to give it a slight bevel, but we don't wanna roll in an extra loop. We just want one bevel like that. And then let's grab this edge over here and go G, Y, and just kind of push it in a little bit. E to extrude as to scale, just one little bit like this. And I think we can actually grab these two edges here. Just go S, just scale them a little bit, just to make it a little bit thinner like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our face select option and we wanna make, I'll quickly show you guys, this little um, protrusion that comes out here. I'll show you guys quickly. See this thing right over here? We wanna make that. So how do we make that? I'm gonna show you how. So depending on whether you've got a left earbud or a right earbud, it's gonna change, but I'm doing one that is gonna be on the left. So for me, I'm gonna go get my face select option in my back orthographic view. So in fact, we're gonna to have to hide the reference here. So we're gonna to go to our back orthographic view. So control one or command one. And we're gonna find the middle edge here. And we're gonna go one, to so skip one of these faces. And then let's grab this face, this face, and this face. And then just these faces around it like so. So just these nine faces. And then go E to extrude and Y and extrude it back about this much. And then go S to scale and then go E to extrude and Y again. And then S to scale a little bit. And then you're gonna go control plus just to grow the selection like this. Then go to your smooth tool and just lightly smooth it out like so. And now we have that rather complicated bit done. So let's go to our edge select, shift alt, left click on this edge over here. E to extrude, S to scale, and then just go G, Y, and kind of tuck it in here for now, like that. Let's tab out, let's right click and go shade smooth, and let's also just give it a subdivision surface modifier. So click on your modifier, type in sub, and get a subdivision surface, like so. Okay, let's go back into edit mode. A to select everything, Alt N, and let's just recalculate any normal. So let's go recalculate outside, just in case we have normal issues. And now we're gonna get to the fun bit. So how do we make this kind of circular bit that comes out of here from a donut face like this, okay? So it might seem tricky, but there's a trick we can use that's gonna make this easier. So let's go to our front orthographic view. And let's go Control R, add in a loop over here in the middle. Let's get our face select option. And we wanna go here and select this face over here. So these four faces, another four faces underneath it, and some four more faces like this. So just 12 faces all together coming over like this. In fact, let's just maybe deselect these guys down here and then just select these ones up here like that. So we just want 12 faces selected. And let's go to our right orthographic view and go E to extrude out about this much and then go X and delete those faces. Let's go to our edge select and go shift alt left click on this edge and then go Shift, Alt, and S. Shift, Alt, and S, and then round it out. And in the right view, let's go R to rotate it, roughly flat, and then go S, X, zero. Press Enter, and then let's go R to rotate again, and S to scale it. And then we're just gonna go Shift, Alt, S one more time, just to round it out as much as possible. And now we have something like this. But for now, I'm just gonna um, turn off our subdivs just so we can see a bit better. Let's go to our vertex select option and select this middle vertex, double G just to slide it down. Enable X mirror, then grab this one over here, double G and just slide that down like so. And maybe this one here just a little bit, just to round these guys out like that. And maybe grab these two and then your side view, maybe just lift them a little bit to kind of match the reference. They're gonna turn off X mirror Let's grab this loop of verts over here. Let's scale them a bit, rotate them. And I'm gonna bring them about here. And then E to extrude again, 
bring them out to about here, S to scale. And then let's go E to extrude, S to scale up here. And then in our right view, let's just go E and extrude in like so, S to scale. And then we can come in here, control R, click and roll in to slide in an extra loop. Control R in the inside, do the same thing. And let's turn back our subdiv modifier, tab back out, and now we've modeled that bit over here. And I can see compared to the reference, it maybe looks a little bit small, um, but you know, I'm not, I'm not really too fussed about it. You can always kind of just grow the selection by selecting this loop and with proportional editing, kind of just try and scale the thing a little bit. But you know, I wouldn't go too crazy with any of the finer details here. Yeah, so something like that. So now that we have that part done, um, let's make, let's have a look at the reference again. Let's kind of make this inner rubbery part that you see over here in the inside. So kind of like this flange. So let's grab this, go back into edit mode, turn off proportional editing and let's go shift alt left click just to select this inner loop. Shift D to duplicate, S to scale, G, Y, bring it out a little bit. So we're just kind of creating this edge over here then we're going to tuck in right against here. Then we're going to go E to extrude and Y, extrude it out about this much. Then E to extrude as to scale a little bit. And let's grab this inside bit here, inside edge, E to extrude as to scale. Let's go G, Y and move that in. And just so we can see a bit better, let's tab back out. Let's go to our materials. Let's click plus. And for now, let's just go to our viewport display and give it a temporary material. So I'm going to go with something that just looks like the body color. Right click, go shade smooth, by the way. And then let's go plus and create another one. Let's tab into edit mode and select the vertex on this new piece. Control or command L to select the whole thing. And then let's assign that second material. And let's just give that a different kind of blue. Now we can kind of see the difference here. Okay, so now let's um, grab this edge over here in the inside. E to extrude as to scale in about this much and then go G, Y and kind of move it in. Once again, we are just trying to make this kind of flange thing in the inside. And then we're gonna go E to extrude as to scale again, G, Y kind of move it in. And let's just kind of bring it into this inside loop here and just kind of scale it. And then we can come and maybe grab this edge and now just kind of adjust it. So by bringing it out to here, control B, let's create a bevel and roll a few times just to add some segments. And now we have that sort of flange in the inside there like that. And there we have that bit kind of looking really cool. So, so far we're making good progress. I think we've done a lot of the hard parts. So now let's make this little dome here, which is a lot easier It's a little um, silicone piece that sits in the ear. So we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna go to our, this is add in a cylinder. Let's tab into edit mode and in our top view maybe. Let's just grab this, left two verts over here and then go control I to inverse and then just press delete. And then let's delete the vert. So we only have this one edge in the side here and let's go to our modifiers, add modifier and let's get a screw, click on screw. And now it's spinning it around like this. So now all we have to do is try and model roughly, um, let's have a look, this thing over here, that sort of piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, with these two verts selected, right click and go subdivide. And then I'm gonna grab this edge over here, kind of bring it down and then go E to extrude, maybe like so, E to extrude. And then just, and then just adjusting these verts over here. And then let's grab the bottom vertex and let's just go E extrude it in just slightly at an angle. And then let's just grab this top vertex and let's just go E to extrude and extrude that in like so. And this is very forgiving by the way. And let's tab back out. And for now, let's just go G and move it forward like so. At this point, I'm also just gonna grab the references and just delete them. And then let's now with this selected, go add modifier. Let's give it a solidify. Let's give it a little bit of thickness and let's go add and let's type in bevel, get a bevel and let's bring this bevel amount way down and bump up the segments. 
And then let's go add modifier and get a sub and get a subdivision surface. And let's make sure to save as we're going. And now in your front of graphic view, you can just come here and adjust this like this until it's all looking good. Maybe you grab this inside a bit over here, maybe bring it in. Yeah, maybe bring this down, extrude down a little bit more. Just kind of making the inside bits. And with that done, let's tab back out. And now in our right view, we can go S to scale, R to rotate, and let's just move this piece in here and just try and get it to match up. So it should sit right there. And let's go to our materials, cut on the drop down and give it that second material we created, which is the same as this rubber inside here, as you guys can see. Okay, but I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. So I think we have successfully modeled this thing. So let's go shift A, let's just quickly add in an empty, let's give it a cube. And let's just grab these two parts and holding in shift, let's select the empty and go control P. Let's go object and keep the transform. So now we can grab this, rotate and it all goes along. So let's go alt H, just bring back anything that's hidden. So I'm just gonna delete these references. All we want here in the scene is this empty with our two components here, our earpiece and our um, loop switch over here. So I'll see you guys in part two, where we're gonna set up a nice background, some nice materials and some lighting. And I'll show you how to render this out as a final animation. And for good measure, we'll probably even throw in a little bit of compositing to make this look even better. So that's gonna be part two.